Alright guys, this is a video I did not want to ever have to make, mostly because I'm um, honestly a little bit lazy, but it's been requested so much, I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and do it. Could be 15 minutes long, I might quit halfway through, you'll get it eventually. Check it out, how to name organic molecules, like these monstrosities. Luckily for you, i got a simple process that's always going to work. Now, some of you are going to prefer to memorize each of the different methods, like, oh, this is a carboxylic acid, so I'm going to find the longest chain that contains the carboxylic acid, use the root, um, meth, eth, prop, but, pent, or whatever, and then put oic acid at the end, and then do whatever. You can do it all for the same thing. I'm going to show you the thing that always works all the time. Step one. Find the longest carbon chain. In most cases, you're going to be able to take a look at the molecule and decide what kind of molecule it is. This is an alcohol because it has an OH on it. This is an aldehyde because it ends with a double bonded O. If that double bonded O was in the middle, it would be a ketone. If it has COOH at the end, it's a carboxylic acid. You know all that stuff. You've got to figure out what the longest carbon chain is that contains that main thing. Let's do it for this one first. The main thing here is the alcohol. What's the longest carbon chain that contains the alcohol? Well, this is carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5. And I can go either way here. Either way, there's only one carbon to go. So I'm going to call it this one carbon 6. Check. This is a six carbon chain, which means the name is going to contain the root hex. I got that because I memorized this chart when I was a wee little boy. One is meth, two is eth, three is prope, whatever. Memorize it, figure it out. Step one, find the longest carbon chain, that's the root. Hex. Done. Step two, what kind of molecule is it? Oh, well, we already established it was an alcohol. Alcohols end with all. It's as easy as that. Now, alcohols can actually be anywhere on a molecule, so you're going to have to tell people where the alcohol is. In this case, it's attached to carbon number one, so it's actually going to be a one-all. If that alcohol was over here, it would have been a, a three-all or something. What's next? What side chains are there? Ooh, this is my favorite part. So we got our main carbon chain, one, two, three, four, five, six. What's stuck to it? Well, it looks like we got a little chloro here on number three. We usually call things like that three chloros. And we've got a CH3 sitting over here on carbon five. Now a CH3 group gets a special name called methyl. I've got a little list here of some of the side groups like bromo, fluoro, chloro, iodo, hydroxy, oxo, methyl, and ethyl. You'll get used to it. A one carbon chain sticking out is a methyl. Uh, uh, see. A two carbon chain is an ethyl. Uh, you'll figure it out. You're going to have like 20 of these by the time you're done grade 12. So deal with it. What order do these go in? These get stuck to the front of the molecule name and you put them in alphabetical order. Chloro comes before methyl in the alphabet. So this molecule is a 3-chloro-5-methyl-hex something, one all. Now, sometimes you'll have two chlorines attached to it. That would make it a dichloro or four methyl groups attached to stuff makes it a tetramethyl. Those di, tri, tetra prefixes don't get included when you're putting these in alphabetical order. It's just the raw root of whatever the side chain is. Chloro before methyl. Uh, even if this had a tri before it, you would still put it before methyl because C comes before M. The tri makes no difference. Just saying. And lastly, are there any extra double and triple bonds that you have to deal with? Oh, why, yes there is. Here we have a double bond starting at carbon number two. That's the difference between a hexanol and a hexenol. 
you have to mention whether or not there are double and triple bonds by using ene, ein, and ein. Remember, ein is for single bonds, ene is for double bonds, ein, that's y-n, for triple bonds. And you have to tell people where the double bond starts. Here, the double bond starts at carbon number two, and so it's a two ene. This is the official IUPAC name for this molecule. 3-chloro-5-methyl, hex-2-ene-1-ol. Notice there are dashes every time you go from number to letter or letter to number. Otherwise, there are no spaces anywhere in the molecule name. Let's do this again with this molecule. It's an aldehyde because it ends with the double bonded O. And we've got to find the longest carbon chain that contains that aldehyde. So carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, carbon five. I get to split off here. This is the longer carbon chain though, so we're gonna go that way. Carbon six, oh, we're splitting off again, but this is the longer carbon chain. Carbon seven, carbon eight. All right, it's an eight chain, sorry, eight carbon chain. It's an oct. What kind of molecule is it? It's an aldehyde. So we're going to put al at the end. Now, aldehydes have to be at the end. So you don't need a number to say where it is. Next, we need to name our side groups. Well, I've got a methyl on number five and a methyl on number six. So that, to me, is a 5,6-dimethyl. See, two methyl groups, one on carbon five, one on carbon six. and I've got a fluoro on number seven. See, that's all the side chains. Put them in alphabetical order. Well, F comes before M. Oh, but wait, what about the dye? Don't include the prefixes. Already told you that. Listen, seven fluoro, five, six, dye, methyl, oct, something al. The last step is if there are any double and triple bonds that you haven't accounted for. Why, yes, there are. In fact, there are two double bonds, one starting at carbon two and one starting at carbon three. So that makes this a two, three diene. And again, there's no number to indicate where the aldehyde is because it has to be at the end. The official IUPAC name for this is 7-fluoro, 5-6-dimethyl, oct 2 3 diene al because it's an aldehyde. Bam! Who's a genius? You are, because you consulted chemist Nate when you had to name these molecules. True story. What I want to point out is that you may look at this and say, oh, 7, 5, and 6 seem like kind of high numbers. Maybe we should have named our carbon chain from the other side. Look, when you name this an aldehyde, you've got to start naming your your carbons from where the aldehyde starts. I did that over here too. I started naming my carbons from where the the guts are the important part of the molecule, the all started, or I'm giving that the lowest number. Give the carbon with the aldehyde on it the lowest number, just like you gave the carbon with the alcohol on it the lowest number possible. Just saying. You don't have to worry that these are too high because you numbered the carbon from the right side. All right, hey guys, that's my, uh, my best way to name organic molecules. Again, there are some more specific rules you might want to know for things like carboxylic acids, amines, amides, esters, epoxides, ozonides, uh, other heterocyclic carbons, benzene. You know, these just work for straight chains that are aldehydes, ketones, alcohols, stuff like that. Alkanes, alkenes, alkynes. Point is, best of luck.